Now it's time for the semi-finals of the men's 400 metres. Absolutely packed here this evening. And those lucky enough to have a ticket will see some of the sport's very best. This is a very, very competitive event. Real sense of anticipation ahead of these semi-finals. Wade Van Niekerk, the world record holder, the Olympic champion, the defending world champion, 43.03 from lane eight. It was the standout performance in Brazil last year. First two plus two fastest losers across the three semi-finals. And fast is the operative word. Here's the lineup for the first of the three semi-finals in the men's 400 meters. What an absolutely loaded race. Will London the third for the USA, Stephen Gardner, brilliant performer from the Bahamas, and Fred Curley, seventh fastest in history, goes in seven. Kevin Borle, national champion, got a bronze way back in Daegu. He was European champion the year before that. He's gone well under 45 this season, coming back to four. Dwayne Cowan, coached by his dad Lloyd, PB this year, under 46 seconds for the first time. But he will need to go out hard, because what a find this guy has been. Fred Curley has won all 16 of his 400-meter races so far this year. 43.70, one of the quickest in history. Nathan Allen, a silver in the relay last year in Rio. He's the national champion. Look at that, 44.52, PB shape this year. What about this young powerhouse from the Bahamas? They call him Boy Wonder. National champion, 44-26. He's won the Stockholm and Doha Diamond Leagues. The appropriately named Wilbert London III. World Junior Silver last year. Second in his heat, third in the US Trials. Another man running quicker than he's ever done. Oscar Husilios, the Spaniard. 45-22, you suspect he'll need more to make an impact here. And on the inside, we say the inside, it's the athlete in lane two, Rafael Amelka, European indoor bronze medalist a couple of years ago. So, we can expect some one-lap fireworks here. Amelko, Poland, Hercilios, Spain, London the third in four, that won't get confusing, Gardner of the Bahamas in five, Alan Jamaica six, Curly seven, Cowan in eight, Borle on the outside, the Belgian. Curly aiming to make it through to his first global final. He is a huge talent. Can he deliver now when it matters? He'll have Gardner of the Bahamas, two inside him in five. Set. They are away at the first time of asking. Let's see who is first up into their running. Relatively even there. Curly going well, Cowan's closing down Borle, but Curly is running well, and look at Gardner. So smooth down the back straight, he's already making up the stagger on Nathan Allen, and we're still to see an impact from London the third. He's gonna have to go some to get back in this. Gardner and Curly, the two men going well here. Curly on the outside, then Gardner. Allen running really well, the Jamaican in third, and in fact, the Jamaican's coming through. Curley's out of this at the moment. He's going to have to rely on a fastest loser spot. The two men from the Caribbean, Gardner, Allen, and Curley, 43.9. My goodness me. The only thing I would say, I hope he's left something for the final. That was a fantastic performance. Curley showed a little bit of an experience there. We know how fast he is, but he went out too hard and tied up when the Jamaican came through on his inside. He's going to have to wait and see if he can go through as a fastest loser. And that, by the way, is a national record for the Bahamian. 43.89, Allen 44.19, and 44.51, Curley's got an anxious wait. Stephen Gardner lowered his own national Bahamian record from 44.27. Then he took it down 100s to 44.26 this season. He's never gone under 44 seconds before. 43.89, a national record, as you say, Ron, Rob. And Allen as well in second, a personal best of 44.19.
He's still on the track, though. Obviously, it took a lot out of him because it was a sub-44 second run, but boy, did he drag those two guys round with him. Exactly. The fascinating thing about that race, I think, those two guys were with him, but the others way back there, London of, of the United States, 45-1. You know, it's, it's it's interesting the difference in standards between those three and the others behind, but we expected a lot more from this apart from these three. Yes, yeah, some of them, like London, have had the full American collegiate season, and a lot of the Americans, you know, don't do so well when they come to the championships. But just another line on Gardner, that takes him to 12th on the world all-time list, one place behind the former world record set by Lee Evans. That just shows what a class run that was. Well, in the Bahamas, he's the boy wonder. And you know what? Even though he was tired afterwards, lying on the track, looks him pretty. He's holding his form wonderfully well. Quick question then, bearing in mind what a big PB that is. Is there any danger that that will have taken something out of his legs that he can't replace in the final, or has he got enough time to recover because that's not until Tuesday? Well, I'll ask Catherine in a moment. I would say there's probably time enough. If you have two in one one day, then there's a real problem. But, of course, it takes them out. You often do get semi-finalists running faster than final. Kath? Indeed. It's an interesting timetable this year because uh, normally when we've had major championships back in my day, we used to run consecutive rounds, which would be actually be easier than having a day off. If you have a day off, which these guys have tomorrow, Monday, and then have to pick yourself up again, that can sometimes be harder. But it's the individual athlete. It's not a surprise that he's run that fast. We know how talented he is. We'll have to wait and see on Tuesday, won't we, at 10 to 10 UK time. But that was he's done it, though, now. Is it in his legs? Yes, it is. But boy, that was impressive from the Bahamian star. And well done, Nathan Allen, as well, from Jamaica. <laughs> Here we are. There's the start list for this. And look, the big name, the big star, perhaps, for the future, goes in six. Van Niekerk. They'll go through quickly. Harun. There he is on the outside from Qatar. Just on the inside of him. Gregor of Ireland. European. Six in the European Championships. Big Irish contingent here, wave you on. And then just inside of him, the former Olympic and world champion, LaShawn Merritt. Coming back into form, 44-78 this year. Wow, this is the new star in our sport, I think. The new star in this event, anyway. Wade Van Nieker, the Olympic and world champion and world record on well you can't get better any better than that that fantastic run in the olympics from lane eight where he decimated the world record the african champion boloki from botswana the african champion back in 2016. Uh, bronze medalist from london 25. alonde gordon of trinidad and tobago two bronze each from the uh, London Games and then Glasgow 2014. And then Boniface Moresa from Kenya. And on the inside, obviously the biggest cheer of the night will be for this man, Matthew Hudson Smith of Great Britain, European silver medalist and Olympic finalist in Rio. Well, Van Niekerk in qualifying, left it late, but came through so strongly in the last 100 metres. He is capable of running from the front and from the back. Well, they're away in the second semi-final. And Niekirk is going well, but so too on his outside, Merritt. These two are, in fact, storming away, but going down the back straight now. You can see the Olympic champion, and Niekirk closing down on the outside of him. The Sean Merritt also going well on the inside there is Gordon of Trinidad and Tobago. Coming off the bench, it's going to be close. Van Niekirk is there. DB is also there. DB is leading. Van Niekirk, look at the speed that he's got over this last lap. 
Thebe is leading at the moment. Van Niekerk is coming through. He's just going to take it. Thebe in second place. And on the inside, Hudson Smith of Great Britain. Well, the winning time, not as fast as that first semi-final, but fast enough, 44-22. Well, he always leaves it. He looks as if he was maybe struggling a little bit there as Thebe came off the bend, but he came back at him very strong. Do you know what, Steve? We have got another star of the future from an African nation in Babaloki Thebe. He's only 20. He's run 44-02 this season. And he asked some questions of Van Niekerk in that semi-final. Yes, of course, the Olympic champion and world champion took it with 44-22. Thebe ran a more even-paced race than LaShawn Merritt outside him. And what confidence there from the Botswana youngster. Van Niekerk came back to take it. Haroon, actually, on the near side, just came through ahead of Matthew Hudson-Smith, who still ran a good time at 44 74 but what a run from the 20 year old from Botswana we almost expect these kind of performances from Van Niekerk and it is a good qualification but what what confidence from a 20 year old to take on the world record holder like that great run well Van Niekerk of course would have been aware of him and I mean coming into this championships weighed of course around 43 62 this season but Phoebe is a 44 flat runner did he was it as easy as it looked? We're going to have to wait and see. You'd think so with how fast he's run, but it was a very good run by both of those athletes. I don't think yet there's a result of that race. Van Niekerk coming through 44-22. Thebe just behind him, 44-33. Haroon also with the season's best there, 44-64. Not as fast as that first semi. I think Van Niekerk hasn't run his proper race yet. I think he's run the sort of race that needs to just qualify. Third and final semi-final in the men's 400. Oh, it's a treat so far this evening. We've had fast running in the women's 100 meter semi-finals. Fast running in the men's 400 meters semi-finals. This is the third and final semi then, and this is your lineup. Isaac Mukwala of Botswana in lane number five. Definitely one to watch. Been pushing Wade Van Liekirk this season in a Diamond League meeting, in particular in Monaco. So Jamal Walton Jamal from the Cayman Walton. Islands, he'll start in lane number nine, the new Pan American Junior Champion. Only 18 years old, under 45 seconds this season, 44.99. Mikel Cedinho from Trinidad and Tobago just missed a medal at the Rio Olympics. He'll start in eight. In seven, Gil Roberts of the USA. Second at the US Championships, 44.92 to qualify for this semi-final. Lane number six, Demish Gay of Jamaica. Under 45 seconds to qualify for the final, 44.64 this season. But in lane number five, the reigning African Games champion at 400 metres, Isaac Makwala. On the 14th of July in Madrid, became the first man to run sub-20 over 200 and sub-44 in the same day. Lane four, David Rey of Italy, the Italian champion. In lane number three, the Belgian record holder, Jonathan Borle. 29 years old now, 44-43 five years ago, just over 45 seconds this season, and completing the lineup, Czech Republic's Pavel Maslak. It was a big indoor title now every year for the last five years. He has run 44-79 outdoors three seasons ago. So, we've seen some good running. All eyes, though, will be on Makwala. He plans to do the double over two and four hundred metres like Wade Van Niekerk at these championships. 44.55 to qualify for this semi-final. So a clean start 
expect Makwala to go out hard. 19.77 seconds he ran in the same afternoon as 43.92. Speed endurance isn't a problem for this man. And he's absolutely flying down the back straight, as is Roberts of the USA in seven. So, Makwala, lane number five. Working round the top bend between two and three hundred meters. He's going to come into the home straight with a two or three meter lead. Makwala, Robertson seven of the USA, Gay of Jamaica on a charge. He's going to pass the American and come in second. The top two guaranteed a place in the final. Makwala slows down, pulls back. 44.30 seconds. Well, the big guns have delivered in the semi-finals of this men's 400 metres. 44.30 seconds for Makwala, a personal best for Demish Gay of Jamaica. Wonderful running by him, 44.55 seconds. That's wonderful running. He missed the Jamaican Olympic team, didn't he, in Rio last year when he contracted the Zika virus. So a personal best, good running, and Makwala. Well, well, what do we think? Well, that was a good run from Aquala. He ran hard all the way, though, until 300 metres. He gave everything he had till the 300 metres. But then he really did. He's right down over that last 100 metres. Here he is. He's got a gap of almost three or four metres on the rest of the field coming into here. Gay and Roberts just behind, really sort of like struggling to in this man's wake. But I think the last 50 metres, he's looking over his shoulder, but before that, even in the last 50 metres, he took the foot off the throttle. He did. And the headline, as we watch Makwala, is that Fred Curley has got away with his over-exuberance and inexperience in the first of the semi-finals. The seventh fastest man in history will be in the final as a fastest loser. And just a reminder, that race was so fast. The time by Stephen Gardner, 43.89, only the second sub-44 time in World Championship semi-final history. The only man ever to do that before, and it's slightly slower, 43.95, Michael Johnson in Seville. Well, flashing through is confirmation of that result. And there's your full lineup then, the eight athletes that will contest the men's 400 metre final on Tuesday night. Gardner, Allen, Van Nieker, Makwala, Phoebe Curley, Gay and Haroon.